Hi there. Welcome to a late afternoon edition of Lunchtime Live with the Wild Center. My name is Shannon. I'm one of our educators here at the Wild Center and this here is Lucy. And Lucy is a common garter snake. So she is the snake that you probably have been seeing out and about recently. If you've visited the Adirondacks or anywhere in New York State, they are by far the most common species of snake that we see throughout New York. Uh, and thankfully, they are a harmless snake. Uh, they are diurnal, which means that they're active mainly during the day, which is why we see them so frequently. And they really like to sun, specifically in the middle of trails or on rocks, sometimes on your front porch. Uh, so you may see these guys basking in the sun on a nice warm summer day. But Lucy, she is one of our ambassador snakes. So what that means is that she lives here with us at the Wild Center and we actually bring her out for programs. So it's a very rainy day here in Tupper Lake. So we thought we would feature Lucy digitally um, during this program. So as you're watching, if you have any specific questions about Lucy, feel free to ask. Uh, this is a live program, so if questions come in live, I'm happy to answer them. Or you can always add questions to the comments and I can come back and answer them later for you as well. But common garter snakes, as I mentioned before, they are very common. They live all throughout New York State, including all over the Adirondack Park. Most of our other species of snakes live in pockets all around New York, whereas these guys can be found really anywhere. They're very adaptable snakes. Uh, they eat a variety of small prey. Uh, they can live in a variety of locations. So garter snakes can be found, you know, in rocky areas, in meadows, in backyards, in urban areas like down in New York City, you can find them. You can find them everywhere. I see uh, Christy asked uh, if they're poisonous or not. So garter snakes are a non-venomous snake. They are completely harmless to me. If you look at Lucy's head, it's really, really small. So I can give you a nice up close look at her head here. She has a really little head and inside that head, she has little teeth. Now her teeth, they are pointed backwards. So they're designed to grip and hold her prey. And that's because garter snakes actually consume live prey. So different varieties of snakes, they actually consume their prey using different mechanisms. Um, so some snakes such as venomous snakes, they have two big fangs in the front of their mouth, and those fangs are designed to inject venom into their prey when they strike their prey. That typically paralyzes or kills the prey first and makes it a little bit easier for that snake to ingest that prey item. Other snakes are constrictors. So what constrictors do is when they strike their prey, they actually then take their body and they'll wrap their body around their prey and squeeze it, which cuts off the blood flow usually killing that animal, again, making it easier to ingest. Garter snakes, they don't do either of those things. They actually consume live prey. So they strike and grab onto their prey with their teeth, and then they are going to eat it while it's moving. So I've had the pleasure of watching wild garter snakes uh, eat many frogs, even here at the Wild Center, just alongside the trails. Sometimes you'll get to see that happen. And those frogs are kicking as they are, uh, as the snake is working it back into its body. Now snakes, they are known for eating prey much larger than their bodies. Uh, and that's because they don't eat as frequently as we eat. So as people, we're eating, you know, three meals a day. Lucy only eats once a week. So she only needs one really big meal a week and that will sustain her for that entire week. Um, so they are eating much larger meals. It does take them a lot longer to digest those meals as well, but they actually have really cool jaws. So they have a specialized bone in their jaw called the quadrate bone, and it can swing open about 70 degrees. So they can open their mouths really wide despite the small size of their heads. And then their lower jaw actually doesn't have a piece that connects the two bottom halves. So she can actually almost kind of walk the lower halves of her jaw around that frog, let's say, as an example, to work it further back into her body. And then you'll usually see kind of a big lump as it digests. Snakes have very long stomachs. So as uh, she is digesting that prey item, you can see it kind of working its way through their bodies. 
I did see a couple other questions come in, so I'm gonna go back up and answer those. Anita asks, how old is Lucy? So Lucy is about two or three years old. She actually was a wild snake um, who wandered into the wild center. So, you know, we're right out here in the middle of nature. As I mentioned, I see a lot of garter snakes just basking on our trails or crossing the trail during the day. So she got a little turned around. She wandered into our building and we realized that she had a really nice, calm, mellow nature, which isn't the case with all garter snakes. Some garter snakes can be a little, you know, more aggressive simply because we are giants compared to a small little garter snake like Lucy. So they view us as predators uh, and they are going to try to protect themselves. So if you ever try to pick up a snake like Lucy, likely they're gonna try to strike or they may musk, which is another defense mechanism that snakes use. They excrete a really nasty foul smelling odor from their cloaca which is where their butt is um, and it reeks and that is designed to scare potential predators away. So garter snakes will often either musk or strike or bite because they're protecting themselves. All these guys wanna do is they wanna eat small prey and be left alone. But Lucy, she was very calm, very mellow. So we actually recruited her as an animal ambassador. So now she lives inside, she gets fed by us and she gets to be an education animal. So she gets to teach folks about garter snakes. I did see one other question come in. If anybody watching has questions, feel free to ask and I will do my best to, to answer them for you. Oh, I see Christy mentioned uh, that she's picked up a bunch of um, sticks in her yard and there was a bunch of snakes in there. Yeah, so snakes, they like tight, warm spaces. And that is simply because they are ectothermic animals. That simply means that their body temperature is regulated by the temperature outside. So as humans, we're the opposite of that. We're endothermic, which means that our bodies are regulated internally. So we're always a nice, you know, 98.6 degrees. That's our average temperature. We don't have to worry about uh, regulating our body temperature. Snakes do. Snakes actually bask in the sun, as I mentioned earlier, to warm up their bodies, and that allows them to go and look for food. So you find them in tight, warm spaces. They really like wood piles um, as well, because it provides them with a lot of warmth. So if you have a pile of wood at your house, you may find snakes in there. And if you find a group of snakes, that is very common in the springtime, because that is the mating season for garter snakes. Um, or they could be young snakes if the mother just gave birth as well, if you find a, um, a group of really small snakes. So these guys, when they're born, they are very small. Um, they are a relatively small species in general. Garter snakes on average are about two feet. They can get up to three feet sometimes. Thickness does vary among snakes. So Lucy, she's a relatively thin garter snake. I have seen much thicker ones in the wild, so sometimes their girth is a little thicker. Uh, and since she's young, she's not quite as large as some others. So we actually have two ambassador garter snakes here at the Wild Center. Lucy, again, very friendly, uh, very calm around people. The other one is Richard, and Richard is actually right behind me. So I will move the camera and show you Richard for comparison. He is much bigger and much thicker. Let's see if I can, there he is. So Richard, and there may be a glare from the glass, uh, but Richard is in the back just behind that blue water dish next to that glove box. So Richard is much bigger than Lucy. He's a little bit older than her as well, uh, but their coloration is very similar. So garter snakes are easy to recognize because they have three lateral stripes that run down their bodies. So I'll try to give you a zoomed in look at Lucy's here. She's climbing up my sweater. So she's got um, two stripes that run down the side of her body and those ones are most visible. It's kind of that light green color that you're seeing. And then one that runs right down the center of her back. That one is harder to see. It's apparent by her head and then it fades as it goes down her body. And garter snakes, they can actually come in a variety of colors as well. Uh, we used to have a really gorgeous um, maroon colored garter snake that was part of our ambassador program for many years. Um, but they tend to be mostly, you know, green, brown, black, 
uh, sometimes with yellow or lighter green stripes. Those are the more common colors, but they can vary and they also vary geographically. So wherever they are. So Lucy is an Eastern garter snake. Since she lives here on the Eastern side of the United States. Uh, but there are different subspecies as well of garter snakes that can vary in coloration. Really cool animals, and they're actually doing a really important job in our ecosystem. So snakes, as I mentioned, they are eating a variety of small prey. So she loves to eat frogs and toads, um, also small rodents like mice. And without snakes eating mice, we would actually have a huge problem with mice. And mice can actually transmit diseases to people. So whenever I see a snake uh, in my yard or on my porch, I always thank it because it's actually helping to keep all the mice out of my home. It's kind of like my little uh, mouse hunter protecting my house from those mice. So snakes are pretty cool. Lucy is one of my favorite snakes. Uh, one of the things that you may notice her doing quite often is sticking that tongue in and out. So snakes actually sense very differently than people do. So she doesn't have a nose like ours. She doesn't have ears like ours. So the way that she interprets the world is very different than how we do. So one of the ways that she's sensing is using that tongue of hers. So when she sticks that tongue in and out, she's actually catching little tiny microscopic air particles on that tongue. And then she's pulling that tongue back into her head and touches it against a specialized organ that's located in her head called her Jacobson's organ. And that's connected directly to her brain by some nerves. So it's actually sending signals to her brain about what she's sensing in her, her environment. Snakes are also able to pick up vibrations um, from the substrate that they're moving against. So, you know, snakes are traveling on the ground since they don't have any appendages. So when she's traveling on the ground, she can actually pick up vibrations from the ground and she has a inner ear that's located really close to her jawbone. And that inner ear is, a, is what allows her to kind of pick up those vibrations and tells her which direction to move in pursuit of her prey. Or maybe away from any potential danger as well. So that's how they're able to stay safe in the wild. I'm just going to scroll, see if there were any other questions that came in. If anybody watching has questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I see that Sandra commented that they're harmless and good for the garden. They definitely are. They help to control a lot of pest populations. So definitely good to have around your garden. They don't do any harm to us. Again, if you leave them alone, they are going to leave you alone. They are afraid of us. So definitely uh, thank snakes when you see them. That's what I like to do. I see Todd asked, do garter snakes give birth to live babies or are they egg layers? So that's a great question. Most snakes uh, will lay eggs and then there's no parental care given by the parents. So they'll dig a hole, they'll lay their eggs, they leave, the babies are on their own. Garter snakes do something slightly different. They actually both lay eggs and give live birth, which sounds kind of confusing, but it's something known as ovoviviparis. So what that means is that they lay eggs inside of the, their body. Those eggs hatch inside of the mother's body and then the young are born live. So it's a combination. So the young are formed in eggs, but the mother does not deposit the eggs. So the eggs hatch inside the mother's um, body and then she actually pushes out the live snakes. So they're... She, it's a combination. So they do both. Um, so garter snakes, oftentimes people think that they give live birth, which they do, but they do, those babies are forming in eggs. Oops, sorry. Got that right in the way. Uh, so Christy asks, how does she get her jaw around a small mouse? So snakes have very flexible jaws. Um, so they have a special bone in the back of their jaw. It's called the quadrate bone. And that bone can swing open about 70 degrees. And then the lower two halves of their jaw isn't connected by a piece here, like where our chin is. So she can actually kind of control those lower two halves of her jaw. And that's how she's able to work that um, larger prey item back into her body and eventually into her stomach. 
Um, Judy is asking, is this the size she'll always be or will she get bigger? She will likely get a little bit bigger. So Lucy is still relatively young. I think she's about two or three now. We're not sure of her exact age. Um, garter snakes, again, they're not a super large snake. Average length is about three feet. They can get a little bit bigger sometimes. Sometimes they stay a little bit smaller. It all varies, um, but she will likely get a little bit bigger. Snakes do shed their skin regularly. Usually every, you know, a couple months they'll shed their skin and that allows them, you know, to grow. Even once they're full grown, they'll still shed their skin. They're replacing those skin cells regularly. Uh, Lucy actually just shed this week. So um, that is again a regular process. You can tell a snake is getting ready to shed because their eye will actually start to turn an opaque color. And that's because snakes don't have eyelids. They actually have a scale that covers their eye to protect their eye from any substrates or things that could scratch it in the wild. So she doesn't have any eyelids, but she does have a scale that covers that eye. I'll try to give you a close look at that. Um, and when snakes are ready to shed their skin, usually their skin looks a little dry as well. Um, and then they shed it starting at their head. So what a snake will typically do is when they're ready to take that old layer of skin off, They'll scratch their, their, where their nose is against a rock, a stick, something rough. That'll tear a small hole in the skin by their head. And then they kind of usually will wiggle around a rock or a tree stump or something that allows them to help work that skin off of their body. And it comes off inside out. Kind of similar to how we take off our socks. That's how I like to think of it. All right, I'm just gonna scroll through really quick, make sure I didn't miss any other questions. Um, Christy noted that uh, one of our snakes looked darker than the female, so I did showcase Richard a couple minutes ago. Um, Richard is slightly different color. Darkness may not vary necessarily between males and females. As I mentioned, their coloration can vary uh, just from snake to snake, as well as where they live geographically. Um, Richard is a little bit darker than Lucy is. He's kind of more of an olivey green. She has kind of that lighter green in her stripes. So slightly different color as well. Sometimes they'll be black and just have that kind of really light yellow or light green stripe down their body. What predators do snakes have? A lot. <laughs> so garter snakes, they're relatively small. So they are gonna have a lot of predators. Couple main predators um, will include aerial predators, so any type of bird of prey. So that includes animals like owls, hawks, eagles, really any type of bird of prey may go after a snake. Um, also includes different land carnivores. So foxes, coyotes, they might may go after snakes. Um, bigger snakes will actually eat smaller snakes. So again, garter snakes are one of the smaller species. So they do have to look out for larger species of snakes as well. The largest species of snake that lives here um, in the Adirondack Park is called a black rat snake. They can get six to eight feet long. So they are a much bigger snake than a garter snake who's only two to three feet uh, typically. So there are a lot of predators out there in the wild, uh, a lot of bird of prey, um, larger mammals, as well as other snakes. So they have to be on the lookout, making sure that they stay safe while they're out looking for their own prey. Thank you all for all of these questions, by the way. This is great. Um, I appreciate you putting your questions in the comments. Um, Derek is asking what garter snakes like to eat. So they really like to eat amphibians. Amphibians are one of their favorite things to eat out in the wild. So that includes frogs, toads, salamanders, um, any of the above. But they're not typically picky eaters. They'll go after anything they can really find. So that also includes a lot of small rodents, like I mentioned earlier. Um, they love to eat little field mice, little voles. Um, they may go after big bugs and smaller snakes. So even garter snakes may go after smaller snakes. Snakes come in all different shapes and sizes. But whatever they can sense they're going to eat, we do have a lot of frogs and toads and salamanders here in the Adirondacks. So that is primarily what these guys are eating in the wild. 
Here at the Wild Center, Lucy does eat a mouse each week. As I mentioned, they don't need to eat very often, only about once a week. Bigger snakes, maybe only once a month, so, or once every two weeks. Yeah, I see Donna's mentioning that she'd rather have snakes outside than mice inside. I would agree. I would much rather um, have the snakes outside the house than the mice inside my house eating all my food and bothering me and potentially getting me sick. So snakes do do a pretty big service to us people. If anybody has any last minute questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, and I will also check back later in case you watch this later and uh, make sure I answer any questions that come in. I see Judy is asking, she's in Southern Vermont. Do you know what poisonous snakes we might have here? So I'm actually not super familiar with what um, types of venomous snakes live in Vermont, but I will mention the types that live here in New York State because I'm sure there's some crossover. So here in New York State, we only have three venomous snakes total, which is not very many. Again, the most common snake that you see is this guy, or girl, the garter snake. Um, the one type of venomous snake that lives here in um, the Adirondack Park, and probably can also be found in parts of Vermont maybe, is the timber rattlesnake. Now, they don't live everywhere in the Adirondacks. They live in very isolated populations over by Lake George and um, the Champlain River Valley. So, or Lake Champlain, sorry. Um, so that's typically where you find the timber rattlesnakes. I know there's a population around, along the Tongue Mountain Range that is well marked and well known. Um, and they may live in a couple other pockets throughout New York State as well. Down in Southern New York, we also have, um, what am I thinking of? Copperheads, that's uh, coming to mind. Copperheads live down in Southern New York. They're another type of venomous snake. And then we have a small species of Masagua. It's a water snake that can be found in New York, but they're actually relatively small and can't hurt people. So the two venomous snakes in New York state that have the potential to harm a human are the timber rattlesnake, timber rattlesnake excuse me, and the copperhead. All right, thank you all again so much for watching. I also think snakes are super neat, especially garter snakes. I would agree with you, Cheryl. Um, so snakes are pretty cool. Uh, Cheryl also asked, are garter snakes born live or by eggs? Both, the answer is both. So the mother garter snake will actually um, lay eggs, but they never actually leave her body. So, um, they, the, the young are formed in eggs, they hatch within the mother, and then the live snakes come out. So they do come out live, but they are formed within an egg, just like most other young snakes. Oh, I'm not actually sure how many eggs are in a single clutch. I think it varies, probably anywhere from five to 10 is my guess, maybe slightly more than that. Um, but. I'll get you a more accurate answer once I put Lucy away. Do garter snakes hunt during the day or night? Garter snakes are diurnal, so they are daytime hunters, which is why we see them so frequently, because we're also awake and active during the day. So a lot of um, snakes that are out at night we hardly ever see. But these guys are diurnal. You'll see them basking in the sun in the middle of a trail. I've had the pleasure of watching snakes eat out in the wild. It's really cool to, to witness that. Ooh. Let me just scroll real quick and make sure there's no other questions. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something new. Got a cool look at Lucy. She has calmed right down now. She was being very active at the start of the program, but now she's kind of just chilling out. So at night, garter snakes go back to their den. They typically, you know, have a home base where they retreat to, maybe a wood pile, um, an old animal burrow. Snakes will often move into burrows left behind by other animals. Sometimes underneath old buildings or structures, they form a den. 
So it varies based on where they are. Again, garter snakes are super adaptable. They can be found all throughout New York State. So they live down, you know, in more urban areas. They can live in suburban areas. They can live in meadows, forests. I've seen these guys up in the mountains here in the Adirondacks. So sometimes little rocky caves. So their den will vary based on where they're living, but they do have a den that they will rest in during the evening hours. And then they like to come out and hunt during the sunny hours. The sun helps warm them up and gives them energy. All right, and I think Lucy may be, you know, nodding off. She's getting, oh, nope, she's still sticking out her tongue. So it's hard to tell when snakes are actively sleeping again because they don't have an eyelid, so they don't close their eyes like we do. Um, but usually when they're very calm, you, they may actually be sleeping. But I'm gonna go ahead and put Lucy back in her home. And I do wanna thank you all again for joining me. Uh, feel free to tune in whenever you see the Wild Center go live. We have something fun to show you. Typically on Sundays, we'll give you an up close look at one of our animal ambassadors. Today happened to be Lucy. So thanks for tuning in and have a great day, everybody.